Hello there, my name is Stephen Wing. I'm a neurology registrar in the UK, currently doing a PhD into Parkinson's and dementia with Lewy bodies. And I also love computers. And what I would do is just a short video uh, to show you what I'm using at the moment to manage my bibliographic information because it can get quite big when you're reading lots of papers and I think if you don't keep on top of it from the very start it's, it's very very difficult to catch up so I know there are lots of good solutions out there like papers and Mendeley um, I used to use Mendeley several years ago and haven't used it for a while um, and I'm sure they've updated it I and mean, it's maybe much better uh, Mendeley have a web client as well and papers is also very good if you're on the Mac um, there are another options but it's only a short Google away but at the moment I'm using something called Bibdesk which is a Mac bibliography manager and it's free you can download it down at uh, sourceforceforge.net uh, and the cool thing I like about this is one that it's free so uh, I didn't want to be tied to any one particular platform because I mean, I want to be able to use my big bibliographies for a number of years, and I'm not sure how long I want to keep paying for something like papers. And whilst Mendeley is free, uh, they their their web service you have to pay for, and you know if the company goes bust or something like that, it would be a huge problem for me, and I'd sort of lose the the bibliographic data that I want to keep. So the reason I'm going for Bibdesk is I wanted it to be free. Uh, I wanted to have a a sort of hand in how things are stored and I think it just fits really well with my workflow so you've got to find something that that suits you but um, but Bibdesk I think if you're looking for something it's definitely worth checking out um, and I thought what I'll do is I've got a paper that uh, I want to read by um, is this the one? yeah this is the one uh, it's a science paper by Christopher Dobson who's a chemist working on um, lots of similar things that I am uh, at Cambridge so I'm going to try and get this into my uh, into my bibliographic management and it's a little bit fiddly but I think the extra effort is certainly worth it I'm going to be using an application called LaunchBar and uh, LaunchBar is like Alfred and Quicksilver uh, it's a quick application launcher and you can do all sorts of cool things with it so I recommend checking that one out there so okay let's start with this this paper so what I'll do usually is I'll go to the download page I'll download the paper so it's in my download box um, and then I generally put things in two places uh, and I put things in the article store so this is just a store of articles every single article that I come across and in here I have lots of redundancy in my system but I have a copy of every single paper that I've read so I generally don't print papers off and I like to mark them up with uh, either Goodreader or I could just use Preview on the Mac and I mark things up with notes and highlighting. But I want a clean copy because I may use one particular paper for several projects and the highlighting is specific to the project. So there's things that I might find generally interesting but if I'm doing a particular project or trying to answer, answer a certain question, the paper that I'm using for that uh, will will be highlighted in a different way than when I'm answering another sort of question. So I have a blank copy of every single paper in, in this folder in the article store and the article store has a bibliography file and uh, it's just .bib. So these are all bibtech files. So bibdesk saves everything as a bibtech file. I also use uh, LaTeX to manage my uh, the formatting of my document so it fits really really well with the kind of workflow I'm doing at the moment but if you were using something else like Microsoft Word for example or, or even Pages you could potentially do the same thing for here so this integrates with the LaTeX for me which is why I really like it and the other place is I have a project specific folder so if I'm using the same paper for say three or four projects then um, I'll have three or four copies of that plus the copy that I'll put in the article store so lots of redundancy but data is is pretty easy to come by these days and um, I do actually pay for Dropbox space uh, because of it but I think I think it's worth it in the end so I store all of my projects um, let me just find this in in my projects folder and I'm using Divi to shift windows around here um, so in this folder I'll have lots of different projects and I've got my uh, 
I've got an academic project scaffold that I have for every single one of my projects. Uh, there seems appears to be nothing in it at the moment because I'm going through the process of moving it and I've actually got it all up on my GitHub page. So if you go to github.com forward slash Stephen CW and uh, I've got a repository on there called Academic Project Scaffold and if you click on that this is generally what I have. Uh, I have different versions of articles. There's a readme file that takes you through all of this. I have the, the bibliography in there and the project.tech uh, which is the LaTeX file. Um, uh, it's become a bit more elaborate than that very recently, so uh, like with draft folds, uh, folders and everything else. But uh, have a look at that, it's constantly changing um, because the way I do things is changing. So do have a look at that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll have, uh, generally I'll have a research folder, so if I go into uh, say initial proposal, proposal, this is what the, the current version of my academic product scaffold looks like. Um, and this is kind of modelled on the frameworks like Rails and Django where things go in specific places. The reason I wanted a scaffold like this uh, or, or sort of framework to do an academic project is that um, sometimes I might not touch a project for six months whilst I'm waiting for review uh, or just the project gets stalled and I want to come back to it later and I know, need to know exactly where I left off. So in the research folder I'll have all the research papers, uh, and this is the, uh, the papers that are marked up with the highlighting and notes and etc specific to this project. Um, submissions.md is just a, a record of submissions, I haven't submitted this project yet so um, it's just there unsubmitted. Versions, I have different versions of the file um, and I haven't produced a sort of a final version of it yet so there's nothing in there. Lib is um, a, a sort of library folder where lots of uh, light, uh, files, f files that are related to it. So I did some planning um, with OPML on my node and that, so that I put that in there. So there are things that are related to the project but not directly involved in, in its production. Um, there's the BibTech file, uh, which I've called initial proposal. We'll see that in a bit. And then I've got drafts. So I use Scrivener um, here. So there's a sort of drafts folder with all of the uh, the work in there that, I, that I've been working on. Eventually I'll export that into a version and then I'll compile it to LaTeX and that will go that will go in here as well. So there'll be a PDF using PDF LaTeX that will go all in there. So I want to get this paper in, um, enough talking. So I need this paper and I also need the uh, bibliographic information. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to search for the bibliographic information. Usually you just take the title, maybe the author, um, it's best to check this manually and I always get the information from PubMed so this is a science article and whilst I could go to the science website and get it what I like about searching the Medline database through PubMed is that the citation information that you get is always pretty consistent so they have the same fields and they're filled out in the same manner and I quite like that I don't like having fields missing or extra fields on some um, and if you go to some journal sites, uh, you, you can get very sparse information, which is which is a bit annoying. And I just like consistency; it's more OCD than anything else. Uh, so you click on here, um, do a search for that, and that's the article. And I can just cross-reference it with here. So yes, it's in uh, it's 2004 in 304, and it's page 1259. So that looks like the right one. And then if you click on Send to Citation Manager and then you download here. This will download an nbib file and that I can use to create my bibliography. So if I just close this preview here, um, you can see in the downloads folder down here that I've got the PDF and citation.nbib and that will be everything I need to get it into uh, the, the projects. So first I'm going to put it in the article store. So I'm just going to dr literally drag it across, pop it in the article store there, there it is and then I need to get the bibliographic information and put it in the uh, the bibliography. So the bibliography is all the way up here in articlestore.bib and I've named it with an underscore first so that it appears, this is all sorted alphabetically so it will appear at the top. So if I open that, uh, there's all the, uh, the, the files in the uh, bib desk. Um, so it's a sort of graphical user interface for a bib tech file. So then I'm going to open the uh, citation.nbib file and I like to use a text editor because I like copy and pasting so if I copy uh, all of that and then I can close the file if I click on the uh, window to bring BibDesk to the front and 
uh, paste that in there. You can see it's created the site key for me, so it's called it Dobson colon 2004FK. So that's what I'll put into Scrivener um, in a particular format for Markdown so that uh, it will recognize it. And it uh, looks like I've got a duplication there, which, no, no, it's not. It's, uh, it's not a duplication, it's uh, a correspondence on that paper, so it looks similar. Um, okay, so Dobson's in there, and you can see that Bibdesk has uh, gone to the DOI um, and downloaded a preview of the web page, which is always quite nice. But more than that, I like to uh, go back to the original paper, which was, uh, I haven't really found a good way to do this yet. Um, sure I'm sure that. It was this one, Science in 2000, so I'm going to make sure that's the right way, the right one. Yep, it's the right one. So then I'm going to drag this into Bibdesk. And there it is in there. So if you look in the bib, that gets stored with the the bibtech files. So if you look right at the bottom, local files, and it's got the path there to to my file. And if I double click on it, it will come up, which is brilliant. So I've got it into my article store, but now I want that into my project. So I need the bibliographic information, which I'm going to copy there. So I've just pressed Command and C on the Mac. Um, I'm going to close down article store because I'm done with that. And I need to find the uh, I'm going to find the project which is here and I need to open the initial proposal big tech file and I've opened it up there and I'm just going to paste it in so there it is pasted in but if you look down at the bottom I've still got it linking to the the PDF which is in the article store folder and I don't actually have the PDF within the project itself so I'm going to remedy that now so I'm going to just save this big tech file because I'm done with it close it and I need a little more space here so I'm going to move that to the left um, oh, I'm not done with it, I need the article uh, itself, so I can either re-download it, but since I've got it, it seems like a waste of bandlet, bandwidth, and it was science, this one, just check it's the right one, that's right, so I'm going to copy it, don't drag it, because you'll actually remove it from that folder, and whilst they're symbolic links, uh, it will um, it will change in the bibtech, fi uh, bibtech file, so bibdesk will know where your article is but you won't have two copies of it you'll just have one and I need to put this in the research folder here so I'm just gonna paste that into there and that should have gone down there it is science so this is the initial proposal um, for, for my research and the articles in there so I just need to update Bib Bibdesk uh, file with this I'm gonna drag it in there to the top so at the moment I've got two copies of this article I've got this one which is, if you look down in the information there, is the bottom, um, uh, sorry, the top uh, local file URL uh, there. And I've got the address for the bottom one here. And I've been umming and ahhing whether I want to keep both of these around referenced. I think it might be useful in some ways because then I can click within the project between the clean copy and the marked up copy. But actually for the moment, I'm just going to delete uh, that entry there so I just want the copy the address for the the file in its local position in the folder and that's it so now I can go away and mark this up and keep track of my bibli bibliographic information so I've made some uh, some templates here so I can copy the item using a template I can copy the whole bibtech uh, reference record uh, I can copy a site command which is in LaTeX uh, a RIS record, which is another different format, the item URL, if I want to go for it in the web address. And I've made some templates, so I've got a multi-markdown template that I use to try and get uh, my information into markdown. And, and there's some various others here you can see, and I've got a ref template. So I've based this on the way that nature formats its uh, bibliographic information. So if you click on that, that's in the clipboard now. So if I go to uh, to my text editor again, let's tip, pick by word, and if I paste, you can see here that it's uh, put the author's uh, last name, first name, and then initials, the title of the paper, and then it's got the journal and all the journal information, including the DOI there as well. So uh, it's a really great program, Bibdesk, and I hope that wasn't too confusing, but that's the way I'm doing things at the moment. But as I say, it's evolving every day, and uh, do check on GitHub uh, if I do any major revisions to the way I do things, I'll hopefully try and post uh, another another video and you can all check it out. Let me know if you found better ways of doing this. Um, I'd love to know. Thanks for watching.